Okay, welcome to 12.7, the quadratic formula. Big day today. So first, we're going to learn, review, how to solve equations by factoring. Right? So this is an equation. It has to equal zero to do this because we're using the zero product property. We're finding the factors of that. It must start with 2x and x. It's minus there, so 1 is plus, 1 is minus. I think the plus 5 goes there, the minus 1 goes there. Yeah, that makes 9x in the middle. That is not the answer. The answer is what makes that 0, the factors equal to 0. So negative 5 makes that one equal to 0. And positive one half makes that one equal to zero. So x equals negative five and one half. Right? This one does not equal zero. So we have to subtract three from both sides. Now it'll equal zero. Seven x squared plus twenty x minus three. We're gonna factor that. Has to start with seven x and x. I think it's going to start that's going to be a plus three and that's going to be a minus one yes so this hopefully we can start doing that in your head x equals negative three to make that one equal to zero and to make seven x minus one equal to zero it's one seventh so x is one seventh or negative three so we solve those by factoring. You can't factor all quadratic equations. So if an, a quadratic equation is prime, it doesn't mean that it doesn't cross the x-axis. What it means if it's prime is that the roots are irrational, okay? And so we are going to find the roots I used y there instead of f of x because that was an old equation. But so it crosses right there and there, but there are rational square roots in our answer. All right, so to find the roots of quadratic functions with irrational roots, you're going to use this formula, which is famous. It's called the quadratic formula. You're going to memorize it. So it said x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you should practice saying that several times. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's remember that quadratics are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero in this case. So in this equation, a was one, B was 3, and C was negative 5. Find A, B, and C in this one. A was 4, B was negative 1, C was positive 6. So now, to solve this quadratic equation, we're going to plug A, B, and C into this formula. So X equals negative b, b is right there, 5, so negative 5 plus or minus, that's how we're going to get the two answers we need, the square root of b squared, that's 25, 5 times 5, minus 4 times a, there's a, 2, times c, positive 1, all over 2 times a, which is still 2, so x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 8 over 4. So x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 8 is 17. And believe it or not, that's the answer. There are two roots. One is at negative 5 plus the square root of 17 over 4 and one is at negative five minus the square root of 17 over four. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, let's think about that. The square root of 17 is around the square root of 16 or four. 
So this is negative 5 plus 4 over 4, approximately, which is what? Negative 1 fourth. Or it's negative 5 minus 4 over 4, which is negative 9 fourths. All right, so that's approximately where they would be. But that, they are actually irrational. You don't need to do this blue part. That was just so you understand what that's about. So try this one. x equals negative b, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a, a is negative 3, times c, which is 4, all over 2 times negative 3, 2a. Almost all the mistakes with quadratic formula occur right there. I'm going to write minus 4 times negative 3, negative 12, times 4, negative 48. So it's 9 minus negative 48, which is the same as 9 plus 48, all over negative 6. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 48, 57, all over negative 6. And that's the root or roots of that. They're not roots because it's just a plain old equation. It is the solutions that make that equation true. Believe it or not, the only numbers that make that true are that complicated mess. So if you try to do this, why don't we do this on all of them then? Seems pretty easy. Because if you do it on ones that you could have factored, it's much slower. Here it is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared 16 minus 4 times a, a is 3, times c, negative 7, all over 2 times 3, 2a. x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. 4 times 3 is 12 minus times negative 7, negative 84. So 16 minus negative 84, all over 6. x equals negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus negative 84, 16 plus 84, 100, all over 6. So this is negative 4 plus 10 over 6 equals negative 14 sixths simplify your fraction, negative 7 thirds, and it's negative 4 minus 10 over 6. Or, oops, I did that wrong. It was, that was 6, 6, or 1. It's the other one, right? Plus 10 is 6, 6, 6, 1. This is the one that's negative 14, 6, or negative 7 thirds. So the values of x are 1 and negative 7 thirds. This one you could have factored because you got those. Let's try this one. Again, you should get you should get rational answers because this one was factorable. X equals negative B. So 6, this is a negative 6, so it's positive 6. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. 36 minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 7, all over 2 times 1. x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times negative 7, negative 28, all over 2. 36 plus 28 is 64. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 64 over 2. But since the, you can do the square root of 64 just like you did the square root of 100, you have to do more work. You have to do 6 plus 8 over 2, or 14 over 2, which is 7, and then 6 minus 8 over 2, which is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So x equals negative 1 and positive 7.
So when you're doing this, you're still finding the roots when it's a function. So you make your function equal to zero, right? That's what, what we're actually doing here. X equals negative B. B is negative seven, so it's positive seven. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, 49, minus four, times A, times C, which is four, all over two times one. So X equals seven, plus or minus, 49 minus 16, all over two. 49 minus 16, oops, three, I don't have to borrow, is 33. So X equals seven plus the square root of 33, is that right? Yeah, over two and seven minus the square root of 33 over two, all right? And you can write it with the one plus or minus symbol. But what does that mean, it, right? It's crossing there at this weird x-intercept. At seven plus the square root of 33 over two, zero, and seven minus the square root of 33 over two, the comma zero, are the x-intercepts of that quadratic function. Remember the square root of 33 is around six. So you could figure that out. All right, so here's our practice. Remember, with these, it has to equal zero over here. Those are one of the ones that are going to separate the A's from the B's on the test. So it has to equal zero before you do anything else. So it's my 5x squared minus 7x plus 1 equals zero. X equals negative B, 7, plus or minus the square root of B squared, 49, minus 4, times A, 5, times C, 1, all over 2 times 5 which is 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 20 over 10, which is 7 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 10, done, right? It was an irrational answer. The roots, or it's not the roots, it's the, it's the solution to the equation are irrational. Same thing here. You have to make it equal to zero before you do anything else. 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative b, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 16, minus 4, times a, 4, times c, negative 3, all over 2 times 4. x equals negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 16. 4 times 4 is 16, times 3 is 48, but this is 16 minus negative 48, all over eight. 16 plus 48, is that 64 again? So we have x equals negative four plus or minus the square root of 64 over eight, which means you have to do negative four plus eight over eight, which is four eighths, which is one half is one of the answers. We also have to do negative four minus eight over eight, which is negative 12 eighths. Simplify your fraction with divide by four, and I'm getting negative three halves. And so X equals positive one half and negative three halves or negative one and a half. Oh, there's my wedding photo. I will see you again tomorrow. Here's some good news. Even if it rains on your wedding day, everything works out.